House and Development Progress. Number one and the best. House and Development Progress. Number one. Number one. House and Development Progress. Number one and the best. House and Development Progress. Number one. House and Development Progress. In Nigeria. House and Development Progress. In Africa. House and Development This is Housing Development, a program that focuses on the provision of affordable local housing for all Nigerians, especially the low-income earners. World Habitat Day, observed on the first Monday of October each year, serves as a reminder that everyone has the power and responsibility to shape the future of urban spaces. The team for this year's 2024, which is engaging youth to create a better urban future, highlights the critical role young people play in shaping sustainable cities. On the program today, we shall be discussing environmental climate change, a factor for displacement and homelessness, as well as the Association of Housing Cooperation, State of the Nation's Housing Agenda. But first, let's bring you the trending news in the housing sector. As always, I am your housing diva, Flora Ani. Ekiti State Governor Biodun Oyebanji has warned developers against building on waterways, saying this has been the most identifiable snag, sabotaging government strides to tame flooding. Oyebanji gave the warning in Adoekiti recently while inspecting some sections of the capital city and suburbs ravaged by flood on Saturday. Sections visited include Osekita area of Ekiti State University, where some hostels were overrun by water. Addressing the victims, Oyebanji, represented by the Deputy Governor, Monisha De Afuye, urged residents to desist from action that could sabotage the flood-controlled measures being devised by Governor Pyodun Oyebanji-led government. Oyebanji sympathized with the victims, who are predominantly students, and reminded the residents that indiscriminate blocking of drainages and building of structures and waterways are sabotaging the government's efforts against flooding. Relief materials and flood items were donated to students who lost valuable materials to the occurrence. The Lagos State Government has commenced clearance operations at Delaco Market in Mushin, targeting the removal of shanties and makeshift structures obstructing drainage systems and encroaching on roadways. This was made known via the official X formerly Twitter account of the Lagos State Commissioner for Environment and Water Resources, Tokubo Wahab. Accompanying the Commissioner's post was video footage showing the operatives dismantling the shanties and makeshift structures at the market. Wahab noted that the affected structures were built illegally on drainage channels and along roads, leading to blocked waterways and traffic congestion in the area. Governor of Jigawa State, Umar Namadi, has issued a stern warning to newly elected local government chairpersons and their deputies against land grabbing. He stated this during the inauguration of the chairman and their deputies on Monday in Dutse. Namadi made this clear that land issues are the sole responsibility of the government. Unless the governor authorizes it, he emphasized that land matters in the state are sensitive issues and no local government official should act outside their authority regarding this issue. Governor Namadi also urged the newly inaugurated officials to remain in their respective local government areas to serve their communities effectively. He stressed that his administration would no longer tolerate local government chairpersons living outside their duty posts, whether in the state capital, Dutse, or in other locations. To 
read all the details of the news, do well to visit www.africanalzinews.com. With this year's World Habitat Day team focusing on youth and urban futures, it is impossible to ignore one key factor, the climate crisis, and what it means for fulfilling the right to housing in both rural and urban contexts, including for young people today and in the future. The growing effect of climate change has left countries struggling with numerous environmental challenges. It has displaced millions of people from their houses, as ocean shards, thunderstorm, extreme hotness, flooding during changing climate has caused hostile situations in countries like Nigeria, where the preservation of the environment is downplayed. Experts have warned that if left unchecked, it will cause more havoc in the housing sector and the country at large. Take a listen. The Nigerian climate has been irregular over the years alternating between periods of extreme dry or rainy season. Climate change in Nigeria has led to season of drought and excess flooding, which threatens the country's economic growth and caused loss of lives and properties. These issues have over time become worrisome. We're not just looking at flooding now. Let's look at um, high winds, storm. At the onset of every rainfall, this usually happens. You will see a lot of homes being blown up by winds, very strong winds. And why? Um, it's climate related, but we are also part of the problem. And what did we do? If an estate is springing up now, all the trees that are supposed to act as windbreaks are usually cut down and none is replanted. So when the wind comes, there's nothing to slow down the speed of the wind. So it carries off the roof of houses. In the FCT, the menace is not different. Most areas in the city have continuously been affected by flooding displacing properties and leaving some houses submerged. Uh, around Durumi Road, Gadua Estate, water has been taking houses there a lot. It's taking so many lives, people's lives, children, people moving around, water has been destroyed them. Most of the houses that they build around there, the, the water used to pack the houses when it come with, with the force. Both the road myself, sometimes most have to wait for sometimes after the we, the water stop, maybe it pass more but when the, the 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 road open before motors started to pass. Nigeria has to mitigate the negative impact of climate change at the individual and national level. Environmentalists have advised that the mitigation should involve enforcing the Nigerian climate change policy. What we have done in Abuja and in most parts of the country is that people knowingly, I would say in the case of Abuja, will just encroach into natural waterways and natural water paths, build on it. And the fact is that water must find its course. And so when it comes, there's flooding. We have natural areas, we have green areas, we have natural waterways, right? Now, all that is needed is to clearly mark out these areas and ensure that development don't take place and enforce it. It's not just going back to seats and then when there's crisis, then you come. But it's to enforce and continuous monitoring to ensure that people don't encroach into those natural pathways. The onus is on the federal government to collaborate with relevant stakeholders to ensure that policies are revised and implemented based on current environmental challenges. There should also be public awareness to educate citizens on the negative impact of climate change and how to avert emerging problems. In this urban October, decisive action is needed to address climate change impact on the right to housing. Stay with Housing Development. I will be right back.
Bob Weinshank, CEO of iBuild Global. Keep watching the housing development program. You're watching housing development. In commemorating the World Habitat Day, the Association of Housing Corporations of Nigerians held a State of the Nation housing address presented by the President, Este Sovian Value, Enno Obonga. It was a pivotal moment in the discourse on urban development and affordable housing in Nigeria. The event centered around the team engaging youth to create a better urban future underscore the critical role of the housing industry in shaping the nation's trajectory. Our correspondent to give more details. To mark this year's World Habitat Day 2024, the Association of Housing Corporations of Nigeria, AHCN, held a press conference with the theme engaging the youths to create a better urban future. The president of AHCN, Eno Obonga, during the event, he acknowledged the ministry's progress under the Honorable Minister, Architect Ahmed Dangiwa, noting initiatives like the Renewed Hope Cities and Estate Program, which aims to deliver 100,000 housing units across the country, while recommending a focus on social housing, the promotion of local building materials and stronger collaborations between state housing corporations and government agencies. The housing sector has witnessed tremendous upward movement and progress since the advent of the current administration in the last one year. Compared with the eight years of the last administration, the reform task team set up by the Honorable Minister of Federal Minister of Housing and Urban Development, architect Ahmed Musa Dagiwa, on assumption of office, was highly commendable as this set stages for changes needed in the sector. The ministry followed with the launch of renewed hope cities and estate programs in February this year with a plan to develop 100,000 housing units in two phases. Under phase one, the ministry plans to deliver a total of 50,000 housing units across Nigeria. With the scorecard presented by the Honorable Minister Architect Ahmed Musa Dangiwa in August, it is obvious that the Ministry is on the first lane to make a difference with substantial progress in increasing the affordable and decent housing stock for Nigerians with the groundbreaking of 6,612 housing units across 13 locations nationwide under the Ministry's Renewed Hope Cities and Estate programs in the last one year. This includes the 3,112 housing units renewed Hope City in Kar Sana, Abuja, under public-private partnership PPP, and 12 other locations, namely the 500 units renewed housing Hope in Kano, and 250 units each in renewed Hope cities in Katsina, Yube, Gumbe, Sukutu, Ebony, Abia, Akwa Ebum, Delta, Benue, Nasara, Ushun, and Oyo. A total of 2,500 renewed Hope City housing, renewed Hope City housing units are at Ibe Juleki, Coastal City, Lagos, is also in the pipeline for development. We are elated with the policy directions and creative solutions that the Ministry has embarked upon under the leadership of architect Dandiwa to lay a solid foundation for sustainable housing sector reforms that will touch on all critical value points and problem areas in Nigeria's housing ecosystem. Such creative solutions include streamlining land administration and governance through the review of the Land Use Act in conjunction with the National Assembly and state governments, establishment of a national social housing fund to ensure access to decent housing for low and no income earners and underprivileged the formation of Joint Steering Committee on National Housing Data for the establishment of National Housing Data Center, among others. These policies and the Renewed Hope Housing Agenda indeed give us a ray of greater hope that there is a better future for the Nigeria housing sector that our youth could leverage on. The AHCN president emphasized the importance of involving the younger generation in shaping the present and future of urban development through participatory processes and leadership opportunities at the local level. 
adding that this is another opportunity for the nation to revitalize the economy. The theme of this year's World Habitat Day, engaging you to create a better urban future, is very apt as it provides our government with opportunity to come up with creative solutions that will help drive economic recovery, using housing to create and generate employment opportunities for a teaming unemployed youth. The Renewed Hope Housing Agenda is one of such creative ideas that can help create a better urban future for our youth if it is well executed. Our youth deserve a better future devoid of uncertainty of what lies ahead of them. We need a new nation and greater Nigeria that we can all be proud of. Our dream is to see housing as the driver of Nigeria's economy. Obonga also stated that by shifting the focus of federal and state ministries towards policy making, housing corporations can be better positioned to address the nation's critical housing issues and promote economic growth, especially for the youth and undeserved communities. Welcome back. That's why the high cost of home ownership. Studies have shown that most people buy houses, not just for status symbol and pride, but because they want to have a better lifestyle for their families during retirement. One of the core ambitions of youth is to own a home at a certain age, which brings me to my question. What is the right age to buy a house, if there is really a right age? Well, let's find out on Voices on the Street. It's a, a natural security, I mean, natural human uh, uh, social security demands that uh, people should be inhabited. They should have somewhere to take refuge. So young people, as a matter of fact, should own their houses. But even if it is a mod at a moderate level, it may not be at a, a very high profile level of housing. No one is too young to earn a house except someone who is underage. As soon as you get to the age of 18, you have become an adult. Being an adult, you are entitled to have your, uh, live your life anyhow, any way you want it. And then uh, from that very age as well, you are entitled to start working. When you start working, when you secure some money, you are entitled to own a house. In the Western world, uh, once a child is up to 18, he becomes independent of the parents. He no longer depends on the parents. He has right to have a house and own whatever he, he likes. And if it is implemented in Nigeria, it will go a long way to help the youth and reduce the level of uh, over-dependence on the parents and government and, of course, the society at, at large. That if it is properly organized, we shall go a long way. And if it's an in, uh, independent person, which is entrepreneurship, what are you your money for when you when you can start working within the age 25? Within the next five years, you are sure of getting getting something for yourself. Voices on the street there. Different strokes for different folks. Buying a house for the first time is a big decision and there is no perfect age to do it. When it comes to taking the plant, it's more about individual readiness. You're likely to be ready to buy your first home if you have a steady income and have saved enough for a required down payment and closing costs. All right, moving on. Over the weekend, the spotlight shone brightly on Dr. Samson Amel Walua, the chairman of the Council of Registered Builders of Nigerian Coburn, as he celebrated his 70th birthday with a remarkable book launch in Abuja. Here are the sights and sounds. Dr. Samson Ame Opalua, the chairman of the Council of Registered Builders of Nigeria, Coburn, celebrated his 70th birthday with a remarkable book launch event in Abuja. The occasion marked not just a milestone in his life, but also his enduring legacy in building, engineering, and facility management. Family, friends, colleagues, and dignitaries from various sectors came to celebrate with the man of the day. 
Delivering his speech, the celebrant Dr. Samson Ame Opalua expressed gratitude for the show of love and support on him while highlighting the essence and inspiration behind the unveiling of his three books that spotlights the extensive professional experience and contributions to national development. I also thank these three groups, God, the nation, and my family, for the opportunity given me to study, to serve, I will tell you, where I served shortly. And in the program booklet, we have, we have my short biography also. And contribute my quota to the development of our country in many areas. God, in his infinite mercy and grace, raised me in this country and has given me uncommon opportunities to contribute to national development in diverse areas. The three books being launched here today by our nation's distinguished and eminent leaders, professionals, colleagues, facility management practitioners, and many others are a compendium of my practical experience in the field of facility management. Attendees underscored Dr. Opalua's exceptional leadership and the lasting impact he has had on Nigerian's built environment and facility management. As we gather to celebrate the launch of the groundbreaking book titled Sport Facilities Management in Africa and the rest, these books shed light on a crucial aspect of sports development, health and other principles of facilities management that are often goes on no one of the key takeaways for this book is the importance of strategic planning and efficient management in ensuring the suitability and success of sports facilities. Effective management practices, but not only maximizes the only the utilities of these facilities, but also ensure their long-term viability and relevance in the ever-evolving landscape of sports. Uh, the author, Dr. Samson Opalua has been my mentor, my boss, and uh, we're still together in the same facility management profession. And uh, Dr. Opalua has been very consistent in, in, in the facility management space. He has written some books earlier on. This is the second time he's writing books on facility management. What we lack as far as facility management is concerned is the body of knowledge. The knowledge is not there. Most of the books available are books written outside the shores of Nigeria. But these are books that were written here in Nigeria based on his own experience in both public and private sector. The launch of his books alongside the celebration of his 70th birthday marked a fitting tribute to a man whose influence has touched many sectors in Nigeria and beyond. special day our hearts are full of pleasure a day that brings the two of you close together all the chief executive officers of the housing industry are housing institutions that's why it makes it very eventful to go and celebrate one of us that he has started giving out his son in marriage to one of our daughters the wish is that uh, uh, i'm confident with our son I'm confident with our son who has uh, graduated and uh, he has a very good background, both Islamic and Western education. I'm sure he's going to take care of his wife. Thank you very much, Excellency. Thank you. We appreciate you for your show of commitment, your show of love, and your respect for loyalty. Thank you very much. And we know that from the MP, the villages of Kotu, and of Banda, Nasarawa, Lafia, Kepi, 
Karu Kangoma Akwanga we thank you very much for coming Ladies and gentlemen, we have a photo session with the Honorable Minister. We just want to take a picture with the Honorable Minister. We will invite members of the high table to join the Honorable Minister for a group photo session. Ladies and gentlemen, we have invited the group. This group is looking like the Minister of uh, <laughs> Friends of the group, this is this picture is from the father of the group. After this, we will take the group picture with his friend. I pray that it is easy for us to go through it, and we pray that it is for dunya wal akhira, inshallah. I have to start with the love because I, it's simply. There's no word for it. It's, it's just amazing. It's simply amazing. It's, it's great. Well, like uh, every father will feel, I, I kind of I've started feeling that I'm soon going to be a grandfather. So I think this is one of the happiest days of my life. I think that uh, that's what that tells us that we are, we have grown. Hello, my name is Casey Arrest. I'm the Executive Director of the Center for Affordable Housing Finance in Africa. We're based in Johannesburg, South Africa. Please keep watching Housing Development Program. It's a great show. That is the most I can bring on today. Join me next week for another informative episode of the program. If you miss any part of today's episode and wish to watch it over again and also previous ones, you can do that via the YouTube channel Housing TV Africa. I remain Flora Ani, your housing diva. Bye for now.